Alright, so Griffith's Electrodynamics, problem 2.32. We have two different charges, and they're tied together by a string. So the string has length little a. Um, there's a, they're both like charges. Okay. So this one has a charge of q big A. This one has a charge of q big B. And so, since they're like charges, they're repelling, and they're pulling on the string. So, the uh, problem says that we're going to cut this string and let the two charges fly apart, and we want to know how fast they're going when they're very far apart. So basically, um, we're looking at how much energy is stored in this, and then it's converted into kinetic energy as the, as the charges escape from each other and then we just want to know how, how fast each one of them is going. Alright, so the amount of energy stored in this, you can do this how, whichever way you want, I mean uh, we can look at the potential created by QA and then calculate the work needed to bring QB in or we can look at the potential created by QB and calculate how long, how, how much it takes to bring QA in, you get the same answer and that answer is that, so the energy of this 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, and then we have QA times QB divided by A. All right, I'm going to draw a line here to keep this all separate. All right, so here's how much energy we have to work with. Now we want to know, again, our final goal is how to how do we get the, the final speeds of these two particles? And uh, since the problem says they're far apart, basically we're, we're saying we're converting all of this energy uh, because the energy at any moment will depend on the distance the two charges are. And so when you get very far apart, this will go to zero. All right, so our two best friends in any situation like this are conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. So I'll go ahead and write those out. So when we look at the kinetic energy of these two particles, once all this potential energy has been converted, we have one half. And, and the particles have different masses too, so we have to remember that. Ma, oops, this is a V. One half MAVA squared plus one half MBVB squared. All right, so these two kinetic energies are going to be equal to this. Uh, this electrostatic energy that we had at the beginning, right? And I'm going to write conservation of momentum as well. Uh, and this, I'm, I'm going to, the way I'm going to write it though, we'll have a M A B A minus M B B B equals zero. All right. I, I wrote this in terms of speed uh, rather than velocity, and so we have this. The, the minus sign comes because they're going two different directions. Okay, so uh, we'll just get to it then. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and solve for. Oh, let's solve for BB. How about? Okay, so if we bring this over to the other side and make it a positive, you know, let's go ahead and do that real quick. So I'm going to add to each side. Alright, so MABA equals MBBB and then to get, uh, we wanted to get BB, right, we just divide both sides by MB, so MA over MB and then there's VA. Okay, so now we're just going to plug this into the conservation of energy equation. And let's go ahead and multiply this by 2 while we're at it, just to save on these annoying uh, factors of 1 half here. So, MAVA squared plus MB. Okay, now, so now let's, I'm going to plug this in for BB. Alright, so MA over MB times BA. 
is squared. And then we remember that we divide or we multiply by two to get rid of the, the factors. So that equals two e. All right. So now let's factor out a uh, v a squared. So we have an m a plus. Okay, so we'll we'll have an m a squared on the top. And one of these is going to divide out. So this is an mv squared. We'll divide and this mv by, by those two. And we have one left. Like this. OK. Now what we're going to do is take this and divide it. Um, divide both sides uh, by this. All right. A squared equals so two e divided by m a plus m a squared over m b. Okay. All right. So now what we can do if we want is. Uh, multiply uh, top and bottom by mb to simplify this a little bit. I don't know if it's all that much simpler, but it looks a little bit nicer. Okay, all right. So now all we have to do is take the square root and let's go ahead and plug in our energy. So, space and go ahead and draw a line so all right so we'll take the square root at the end so our the energy was this and we have uh, two times that so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the 1 over 4 pi epsilon not alone and I'll leave a, I'll put a factor of 2 2 Q A Q B over A. Okay, so here's our 2 E, and then we just had this M B over M A M B plus M A squared factor. Okay, and then we were going to take the square root of this in order to arrive at B A. Now, there's nothing special about the labels A and B, so if we want V A, or V B, all we have to do is switch A and B in this whole equation, and we'll get what we, what we want. All right, and, and both of these are going to be positive uh, because of this minus sign that I already pulled out of this V B. So, uh, the VB was the speed or the magnitude of the velocity, right? So we don't have to worry about either one of these being negative because we've already um, shown how one is going the other direction from the other. So again, what we're solving here are for the speeds, for the, for the magnitudes of them. All right, so again, all we have to do is replace A and B. So these two commute, so we can leave them in the same alphabetical order, why not? And then this we need an MA on top. On the bottom, these two also commute and just leave them in alphabetical order. But now we need a B on the bottom. So M B squared. Alright, and then we have our square root over the top of this. And here's our answers for the two speeds of these two particles. When they uh, get far enough away, they will tend to, towards these values for speed.